Hi everybody, it's Edie with the Garden of Edie and I'm here again today with Claudia of Holistic Vision. Are you learning so much? I just, I can't wait for the next one to learn even more. Even though I don't have a lot of these issues, but it's just so inspiring because it's not really just about your eye condition. It's more about your life and your lifestyle and the way you feel and think and what you eat. So it's a really holistic Absolutely. situation here. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about cataracts, which is eye doctors, if you believe eye doctors, they tell you 40 you get readers, 50 you get bifocals, 60 you get cataracts. Boom, that's what, they, and 70 you get um, glaucoma and 80 you get macular degeneration. That's what they usually tell you. Goodness. So this is not, you don't have to get that, right? You can totally avoid that. How do you know when you have them? Well, you might initially not really notice that, but it's basically a clouding of the lens. So things will get more foggy. Despite your glasses, things will not sharp because at that point, glasses can't help, right? It's like a shower glass that's fogged up, right? You can't see through that basically. Most cases people don't know. Um, that's why going to an eye doctor like once a year, especially if you're over 60 to get regular checkups mm -hmm. so that you can catch it early and don't wait till it's like a stage three or four, which in that case, you can only do lens replacement. There's really nothing you can do if it's an advanced wow. stage. You, you always say there's something happening inside the brain, inside their thought process. So if everything's cloudy, I'm guessing it yeah. has something to do with not being sure. Um, Pretty much, and I really like Louise Hay in that regard because she talks about uh, dark future, not having joy in your life. And I think a lot of times when people turn 60 and they don't have a fulfilling work that we have, um, there might be like uncertainty about the future, not really knowing what empty nesters, you know, maybe retirement, but you're not excited about retirement. You also don't want to do your job. So there's definitely that connection of what vision do you have for your life after 60, right? What are you getting excited about? What do you want to see? Um, but there is things that people can definitely do for cataracts or to prevent cataracts. So I think we should talk about okay, that. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, so first of all, cataracts are caused by things like diabetes, heart disease, smoking, um, toxic exposure. So a lot of us are now, we have 80,000 chemicals nowadays in our lives. And so it's almost impossible to completely avoid those. So detoxification is super important, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also like steroids, steroids are very much known to cause cataracts. So if you get steroids, wow. you really ask your doctor, um, that also goes to pets. I see a beautiful dog laying mm -hmm. on the floor. So, you know, that is a very big cause for cataracts, wow. also smoking. So what we want to do, so basically the cataracts are caused by a cloudy lens. That means the proteins in the lens are clumping up and they create that kind of fogginess or cloudiness. Mm. And so movement is really important for cataracts. And we already had several other movement practices for the eyes, but there's one that you might have heard from eye yoga or something. It's like, you know, that idea of moving in and out. I don't really like this mechanical thing so much, but just shifting your attention far and near so that what happens when you look in the distance, the lens is relaxed. The ciliary muscle is slack. So basically the relaxed state for the eyes is distance vision. Now you look up close, you know, the eyes have to converge, you know, you know what I mean? Like almost like think about crossing your eyes mm -hmm. and the lens, the ciliary muscle tightens and the lens gets like thick, like bulbous. Mm. So you basically, it's like a workout. It's like, you know, flexing and relaxing your, your biceps, right? It's kind of the same thing. So you want to move your attention in and out. That's one thing that people can definitely do. So you mean, look, so say you're outside and you can see something close, but make sure you make sure you see something far. Yeah, you want to switch. So when you look up close, it's an, it's more of an effort for the eyes. But it's a really good way to just like we move our bodies now, mm -hmm. right? Our muscles. We don't just sit all day. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with cataracts, creating a lot of movement. Also mm -hmm. sunlight mm -hmm. to a certain degree. We talked about sunlight already is good for the eyes. Depending on your level of cataracts, you might want to like limit it, maybe not at high noon, but definitely mm -hmm. getting some sunlight exposure into the naked eye in the early morning and the afternoon is really, really We're good. back in the kitchen with Claudia, Holistic Vision. And Edie from Garden of Edie. <laughs> are, you, are you guys feeling like more whole now? I, I just feel empowered. Thank you for all this information. So it's welcome. really incredible. And so today we're going to do an eye amazing <laughs> recipe. This is going to be a tropical um, fruit salad. Now, why is fruit so important? Well, they, you have a lot of vitamin C in these fruits. A lot of vitamin C. Uh huh. And all, basically, a lot of different vitamins. And um, what else? The thing that you talk about. But I, I love anthocyanins yes, because they're really yes. good for the wrinkles. <laughs> I mean, I just like them, and they're just so beautiful to look at. 
with all the oranges and the yellows and, and the, the colors, reds and right? the greens. And you talk about this, looking forward yes. to things, seeing things. This is so beautiful. At Garden of Beauty, we try to make every plate beautiful. Mm. Lots of colors. Always adding colors because colors are what feeds every energy center. You know, we, we're like the rainbow. And you need all the different colors of all the fruits and vegetables. So this is um, super tropical. This is an Alfonso mango. You know, they have the big red mangoes, mm -hmm. and this is an Alfonso mango. They're super sweet. They taste a little similar, but they're a little bit different. They kind of have a coconutty taste to it. So what I like to do is it, they're thin, so it's really hard to take the skin off or to scoop it out. So I just like to get a thin glass, oh. and you just push it to the side, and you ever so slightly just pull it down. That is so clever. And there you go. And now with as far as a um, papaya, so this is mango and papaya, and papaya, the way I like to slice this, is in half, then you take out these seeds, okay? You slice it in quarters, and then I just get a knife, and I just run it down as close to the skin as I possibly can get. That's it. Okay, so then we also have kiwi, which is another tropical fruit, and I just like to cut off the ends and just go down the middle like this. And now we're gonna make this delicious dressing. It has lemon juice, quarter cup. We have a quarter cup of coconut water. Mm. Never get the red, always get the clear. A tablespoon of honey. No, I'm sorry, a teaspoon, just a teaspoon. It just needs a little, little, little bit. And then these dried, desiccated coconut flakes, unsweetened. That's all it takes. And now we will plate up this beautiful, beautiful salad. And then we're gonna have some of the kiwi pomegranates. See all the beautiful colors. Oh, Isn't so that just nice. so pretty? And lastly, little bits of mint. And now I'm gonna pour a little of this dressing on top. Ready to taste it? Yeah, absolutely, oh my God. Mm. I get so spoiled here today. So, I'm gonna come back tomorrow. <laughs> please, I want you to. So Claudia asked me, why did I even put even a teaspoon of honey in it? Because it's such a sweet fruit. Papaya, you know, is not that sweet. And when you taste the dressing, I like to taste every element separately. And it just needed, it, the lime juice was so tart, you know, and then the coconut had a little sweetness, but not much. Just a teeny bit of honey just brought it to life. Just really did. And it is a very medicinal, medicinal mm. thing. Mm. Do you like that dressing? The little crunch of the coconut? The honey is actually good in there. It is, it is. Thank you all for joining. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. And Claudia, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. So fun. And we're going to do more things together, I hope. I hope. <laughs> I hope too. <laughs> so wishing you the best health from your head to your toe. And hopefully you can see everything beautifully from here on out.